Hi everyone, Erin from the Wine Sisters here and I'm back with another Wine Wednesday and this time we're getting glamorous, baby. We are talking all things bubbly. And you know what? There's a couple of ways you can get bubbles into your wine and at least one of them is not the fanciest way to do it. So we're gonna talk to you during this video a little bit about the traditional method. Sounds pretty fancy and it is pretty fancy. We're gonna talk to you about the Charmat method, which is really fantastic. And we're also going to talk to you about what you don't want to do, which is considered Mm, not as fine as you might expect, and that's carbon injection. And so that actually does happen with some sparkling wines, some bubblies, and this is literally where you take a still wine and just like you would a soda, pump in a bunch of carbon dioxide to get that bubbly happening. Basically, like you want to uh, sip your Chardonnay, you hook it up to your soda stream, and et voila, a little sparkling for you. Not exactly considered premium, but I guess it gets the job done when it's midnight and you're just really craving a bubbly. Okay, so that, ignore that, that's off to the side. The finest way and the most regal way to get your bubbly, bubbly is the same way that the champenois do it. It used to be called method champenois. That's no longer something that we call it that anymore. We now call it the traditional method. And you'll find this method is perfectly legal and in fact, enthusiastically done around the world. Whether you're in California or Ontario or Australia, there are people who will use this traditional method. And what does that mean? Well, if you were to go to a restaurant and ask your snotty sommelier, uh, sorry, what does it mean to be the traditional method? They would say to you, oh, well that's secondary fermentation in the bottle. And you'd say, oh, fabulous, of course, I knew that, everybody knew that. That one sentence tells you everything, but simultaneously nothing, secondary fermentation in the bottle. Let's break that down, shall we? Okay, so within this actual bottle that you're buying off the shelf, what the winemakers will do, again, whether they're in Champagne, whether they happen to be in another area of France, whether they happen to be in California or Chile or wherever, they will take their still wine. This is a wine that doesn't have any bubbles in it yet. It'll have a little bit less alcohol than you might expect and a little bit higher acid, they will bottle it in this chubbier sort of bottle. And then what they do is they add in a little bit of yeast and a little bit of a sugar substance, usually just an unfermented grape juice, something sweet, something sugary, and they close it with what looks to be a beer cap. Now a byproduct of yeast and sugar is carbon dioxide. Now, quick little rewind here for those of you who need a little bit more wine making 101. You take your grape juice, you add in some yeast, you add it and then that yeast will eat all the sugar in the grape juice and transform it into alcohol. So the same thing's happening in the bottle. You've got your still wine, you've added in your yeast, you're adding in your sugar, you're closing it up, so now it's increasing the alcohol a little bit more, but also the byproduct is the carbon dioxide. But because the bottle is closed, where can that carbon dioxide go? It has to dissolve back into the wine, right? So think about the last time you opened up a sparkling water or a soda, you know, when you open it up, it comes to life. But so basically the carbon dioxide is dissolved back into that wine. Well, when the winemaker feels that it's ready, it need, he or she needs to get that yeast out. Yeast is a, to leave the yeast in a wine would basically be like drinking your coffee with the granules still in it. Not particularly texturally pleasing, certainly isn't gonna kill you, but it's not exactly something that we would enjoy. So eventually when the wine is ready, they remove that yeast, they top it up with a little bit more uh, of that wine, and then they close it into that bigger, fatter cap and they close it with a cage. Now, quick note, if you wanna see how you open up a sparkling wine, you can check out this video right here and you can see how you can very easily, quickly and successfully open up a bottle of sparkling without losing an eye. Bonus points for that. So that's going to be the traditional method. That's the secondary fermentation in the bottle. But not all sparkling wines are made that way. Another very popular way, hands up if you've ever heard of Prosecco, probably you have, right? That is done in the Charmat method. This is actually a method that was invented, interestingly enough. It was invented by a French inventor, a French scientist called Eugene Charmat. Keep dropping knowledge bombs like that and you're gonna be a hit at your next dinner party. But anyway, so the Charmat method basically takes the same idea but makes it on a grander scale so we take our still wine our non bubbly wine but instead of putting it in a bottle they put it in a larger tank they add in the yeast they add in the sugar they seal that tank tight and then under pressure in a much larger way that bubbly 
becomes bubbly. Then it's now bottled and filtered under pressure so none of the bubbles disappear, but you are holding back the yeast and bottling just the wine. Now the Charmat method, you can use that most commonly in Prosecco. That's how all Proseccos are made. You can also make it in Lombrusco, which is another Italian sparkling wine, but you can make it in other areas as well. And in some other areas, they might even call it cuvee close. So it's the closed tank is kind of what it refers to. But you can also use that around. Mm, I'm gonna tell you really quickly as well, there's one, and for you natural hipsters that are really coming on board, you're gonna dig this. It's the Petillon Naturel, the Pet Nat, or the uh, Ancestral method. This is becoming more popular, even though it was invented or discovered centuries ago, this is now becoming more en vogue. And this is where you take a wine that has yet to fully finish fermenting, you take it out of that tank or out of that barrel or wherever the winemaker is uh, in the process of making that wine, and you bottle it while it is still fermenting. Well, once again, when you have that fermentation process happening, the CO2 is a byproduct. And now that you've bottled it ahead of time, you're capturing that CO2 while it finishes its fermentation in the bottle. That typically means for pet nat wines or your method ancestral wines, they're going to be a little bit softer in the fizz. They're gonna be gently effervescent, not necessarily super aggressive. Sometimes they're served a little bit cloudier because of that yeast structure is still in there. And they're gonna have a little bit more of those sort of fruity nuances to them. And sometimes like a little bit more of that citrus note. So that's pretty Pretty good. So what did we cover in today's lessons? We talked about our traditional method. This is by far and large the most laborious, the most prestigious, which is why your wines like champagne and wines that are made in the same champagne style are typically a little bit more expensive. We talked about our Charmat method, popularly used in Prosecco. We talked about this pet nat style. You'll find those in many places now. And of course, we did talk about the carbon injection, but we're not talking about it anymore. Okay guys, that's it for me today. I want to say thanks so much for giving me your time. Make sure that you are drinking really well. I'll see you right back here next week. And if you love this, please feel free to share it with your friends. The more the merrier here at this little wine loving tribe and do subscribe and get alerted to when the new video comes out every Wednesday. All right guys, ciao.